Welcome back. Well, today I am joined by Congresswoman Katie Porter and Melissa Penter, who is the Director of Constituent Services and Outreach. Welcome, both of you. Thank you so much. Thank you for having us. Oh, well, you know what, Melissa, you're, I have never met you, so very nice to meet you. And of course, Katie, always a pleasure. You're always so much fun to interview and you are a wealth of information. And I'm sure this will not be any different than any other time that I've interviewed you. So thank you both. Uh, so a lot's been going on and I know we'll, we'll kind of at the end talk a little bit about COVID-19 and how it's affected your office. But let's talk about what your office can do you know, for the residents and for the seniors, because they have lots of questions. So as part of running a congressional office, one of our primary duties is to help our constituents. And that includes all of the folks living in and near Laguna Woods. And so our office provides help with federal agencies. And so for example, if you're having a problem with social security, with Medicare, with veterans benefits, with the Internal Revenue Service, um, any kind of federal agency, you can reach out to our office. We'll ask you some questions, get some more information, and then go to work on your behalf. So for instance, like if they um, had something going on with their social, social security, because I know that's got a lot of scams going on regarding that, is that something your office can help them with too? Yes, so we, we definitely appreciate hearing from people about any problem with the federal agency. And of course, this is in addition to the fact that we always welcome people to reach out to us and share their opinions about what's going on in this country and about their priorities. But the casework, the ability to directly help individual constituents is really a separate and important part. So most of the people who reach out to us are expressing their ideas or their opinions about we need more funding for this, we need more, more work, we need to protect Social Security and Medicare, we need to safeguard our post office, for example. But casework is really about what's happening to an individual individual person or an individual family. So um, Melissa can give a great example of a kind of case that I think will illustrate what exactly we do. Okay, and, and good. So Melissa, before you tell me about the case that you worked on, can you give me a little background on you? Sure. Um, so my name is Melissa. I joined this team a few months ago during uh, the pandemic. So it's all been virtual, but we've been making it work. And um, uh, so I practiced law for about three years before I decided to move to the government space. I worked in another congressional office for about a year, and then in May, I ended up um, in Congresswoman Porter's office. So uh, this type of work that I'm doing is really what um, I love to do. I love to help people, especially when it comes to cutting through red tape of the federal government and, and helping them resolve the issues that are the most important thing going on in their lives a lot of the time. So when we can help someone with something like that, it's, it's so rewarding and it, it really is, in my opinion, the best way that I can be of service to, to the constituents of the 45th. So if someone was to call, would you be the first person that they would be in contact with? Oftentimes, yes. Um, sometimes if they reach the general office number, they might speak first to an assistant or an intern, but then immediately that message is given to me and, and I return a call. I also have uh, a few other staff members who help me with casework uh, in varying departments and varying ways. So it's possible that you might talk to one of those people, but I'm always involved in, in every case, especially if something gets complicated or there's a particularly um, worried or concerned constituent, um, I'm always happy to talk to anyone and look closely at their case and, and work on it with them. Okay, so Katie, uh, just out of curiosity, I, uh, Melissa said she's been there for a few months. Did you find that with COVID-19 and everything going on, did you need additional help? Well, we definitely saw an increase in people reaching out um, during COVID-19 and, and definitely a big increase in people whose situations were very urgent. Um, they were very worried about whether they were going to be able, to, for example, to get help for their small business. And they were hearing stories that the deadlines were coming or that the programs were not going to have full funding. So we definitely prioritized those calls. And one of the things I'm really proud of is that every single member of our team in D.C. and here in the 45th District during the height of COVID-19, personally return phone calls. That includes me, that includes our staff members, our legislative team, all of us 
we're working to get answers to constituents. And one of the things that we've seen is there are still some ongoing problems, for example, with people getting their um, economic impact payment, the so-called stimulus payment. Right. Um, as a result of the federal government going to telework, some of our agencies, um, the Internal Revenue Service, for example, is behind. So right. if anyone is not getting an answer from a federal agency and they need one, um, if they need help coming through that bureaucratic red tape, if they need uh, you know, the contact, they've been on hold six times and they're not getting answers, don't get frustrated, reach out and give Melissa and her team a chance to help. And she mentioned we have some specific staff members who work in certain areas. A great example of this is we have a dedicated um, fellow who works particularly on service member and veterans issues. And I think those are some of the most rewarding cases that we've been able to work on. Excellent. You know, I have a quick question for you and I'm not sure if you would be the person to ask, but I will anyway. So I was reading an article this morning about uh, airlines and how the airlines are not refunding people for tickets and things like that, even though I think it was stated that it was something that they had to do uh, by the federal government. So is that something that you could help someone with or not? So our role in directly intervening is limited to when the problem is with a federal agency. Okay. So that's a good example of a problem where I would encourage people to call us and to tell us about it. And we can do what we do a lot of, which is oversight. So we can write a letter to the CEO saying, we're hearing about this problem. This is what the law says. This is what you're doing. Um, but the individual intervention is when the problem is directly with a federal agency. I also want to say one of the things I'm really proud of is the relationship that our office has built with state assembly member Patty Petrie Norris because there are overlap. So for example, the federal government stepped up and funded expanded unemployment assistance. Mm -hmm. But the, the entity that's cutting those checks is the state employment department. So we work really closely and coordinate. If you're not sure who to reach out to, give us a call and we'll help connect you to the right government official who can be of assistance. Perfect. Well, that's good to know because, you know, I'm sure people are thinking, okay, well, I need to do this, but I don't know where to go. And so they can contact you. And, and Cotty had mentioned something like that before too. So uh, Melissa, tell me about the case. You, help, you helped a, a lady named Priscilla? So Priscilla um, was actually the daughter. Her oh, okay. mom, her mom, well, so Priscilla had reached out to us um, because her mom was um, looking to receive her VA um, survivor's benefits. She mm -hmm. lost her husband recently and her husband had been a veteran. And Priscilla had applied for those benefits correctly through the proper channels and had been following up and month after month after month was just not really to get any, able to get any information. Um, and finally, they told her, you know, expect an answer in November 2020, 14 months later. Wow. And, you know, Priscilla said, my mom is, is in her 90s and, and she needs this money and we can't wait that long. So they reached out to our office because uh, Priscilla's mom lives in Lake Forest. And so we were able to contact the Veterans Administration on their behalf. And within 15 days, they not only reviewed the application, but approved it. And uh, her mom started getting a monthly benefit going forward, as well as a retroactive payment to cover oh. the months that had been missing. So that money is very helpful to her, and we're just so happy that we were able to get that done for her. That's awesome. I, I, I hope you're not bombarded with phone calls now. <laughs> no, we, I should say, we want people to reach out to us. So I think one of the things Absolutely. I'm really excited about um, is some of the initiatives that we've been doing to try to make people in the district more aware of these services. So one of the things we've started doing is having, uh, normally we'd have in-person mobile office hours where Melissa would go out into the community and be available um, for people to come by, bring their paperwork, talk to her face-to-face. -face. We've moved that to be digital for right now, but mm -hmm. in essence, it's a way to get an advance appointment set up to talk directly to Melissa about your case. So we encourage people to reach out to our office. Um, if you're not sure, better to get help um, and to let us know of the problem than to, to get frustrated or to struggle. Okay, so what's the process? So they would call, uh, which number should they call first? Yep, so they can call our main Irvine office um, and that number is 949-668. 6600. Um, I just want to make sure I got it right. So I'll say it again 949 668 6600. Or they can go onto our website and it's porter.house 
www.federalagency.gov. And when you go on there, right at the top, there's going to be a help with federal agency tab. And you click on that tab and it'll send you to a form. Um, it'll ask you for some brief information, um, but we're not going to be collecting anything that over that web form um, that's particularly confidential. It's a basic intake form. And then you're going to get a, a phone call um, from somebody or an email from one of our caseworkers, Melissa, or one of her team to get more detail and figure out how we can move forward. That's awesome. I mean, you know, since this all began, I feel like most people are really adapting quite well and they're figuring out a variety of different creative ways to help people, even though you can't be face to face. While we had many challenges at the beginning, now we're, we're kind of caught up and, and getting used to it. So, so would you find in your office that both of you are finally figuring out how to navigate everything? Well, I think we move forward really quickly. I mean, Orange County, it's, it's hard to remember. Um, the second confirmed case in the United States of COVID-19 actually happened here in Orange County in late January. Wow. So we began to, I think, really ahead of most other offices in the country um, to plan for this. Um, and so our team has really been working seamlessly. So I think the most important thing is because people hear things like offices are closed, um, they don't understand that. We may be physically closed, but we are still hard at work and we are still available to the community. And like you said, we're making use of technology um, and really excited that we have such a tech savvy um, community, including our seniors who are continuing to reach out to us, expressing their opinion and asking for help. Excellent. Yeah, I remember I remember you and I had a conversation early on and you know it was you were right. It's it's like you guys were on it and you got you know, cranking along very quickly. So, so it's great. And then our seniors obviously are really taking to, taking to heart uh, all of the recommendations that uh, they're doing, which is keeping the numbers quite low here in Laguna Woods as a whole. So oh, absolutely. Uh, I mean, you can see on the Orange County maps and I study those data very, very carefully. Um, the area right around the university um, and the area of Laguna Woods really stand out for their excellent thoughtful and consistent commitment to public health. And I just want to say thank you on behalf of all the people of the 45th district for not only keeping yourselves safe, but making our community safer during this difficult time. So I know our seniors are, are lonely. We're all tired of being cooped up and um, tired of these precautions, but it really is working. Um, and it makes me really proud to represent this area. Yeah, and that's that's great that you say that because you're exactly right. Everyone is a little tired of wearing a mask. They're a little tired of staying home and being isolated. Some do get out, but they are definitely taking the precautions uh, very seriously, and including our hospitals and think people around are, are been wonderful. Everybody's been great. So so thank you for that. And you know, let's talk about how COVID nineteen has changed uh, the things that you've done and the casework that you've taken on. Yeah, I mean, one of the things that we've really been focusing on is trying to let people know about programs that might be available to them. And so we've done that through both direct mail, um, sending out information to people who, for example, own a small business, letting them know about assistance. We've also been doing a lot of digital events. Um, and you can find those on our webpage. Um, we've done events, for example, on how COVID-19 has affected people with disabilities uh, because it's met some real challenges for them, additional challenges for them. We've done one on uh, how and whether health insurance is actually covering the testing that they're supposed to be during COVID-19. Um, we have one coming up on freedom of expression, um, on human rights. So we're continuing to keep people informed about COVID-19 specific things, but also generally about the issues that they care about. And so um, a lot of that is visible on our webpage, um, which is uh, porter.house.gov. You can also follow us on Twitter or Facebook at Rep Katie Porter, OC, yeah, Rep Katie Porter, thank you. Awesome. Wow, you guys are just everywhere. I love it. Now, Melissa, just in closing, you know, what are some things that you're looking forward to uh, here in the next uh, couple months? So in the next couple of months, we are going to um, continue to build out our casework operation and um, focus a lot on really providing that excellent service and what that means in a world where it's harder to meet safely in person. And We've really done our best to connect with every person who needs help and figure out how we can get them um, to communicate with us, whether it's sending a privacy form in the mail or, um, you know, using a telephone call, or maybe they have a way that they can get hooked up on the computer. So 
Um, we've, we've really done our best to do that and just continuing to build up our, our outreach and to continue to provide that excellent level of service and hopefully with more and more people contacting us because we want to help every single person in the district who needs it. Great, excellent. And, and Katie, how about you? Well, we're obviously continuing to fight for state and local funding. Um, we know that our state services and our local services that help our seniors, that help our kids, um, our local schools, they need resources from the federal government. And so it's been, um, I think, eight, 12 weeks now since I voted to pass a bill that would provide that state and local funding. Um, it's still hung up in the Senate, um, but we know that our states and our communities are having to make budget decisions now and are really working hard to continue to provide support services. Um, and so that's something we're really focused on. We're also working to make sure that nonprofits continue to receive resources, that they're not being hurt by this because the demands on them are getting higher. So for example, when we, we did uh, an example of a Facebook Live or conversation we did with AgeWell Senior Services, Meals right. on Wheels OC, mm -hmm. and they've expanded what they're doing yes. during the pandemic. Uh, but that means that they need support. So we're making sure that our nonprofits also are getting the help that they need during this pandemic. And of course, gearing up to make sure that everyone can vote safely in November. Excellent, excellent. Well, thank you both so much. I really appreciate it. Uh, good luck to you in the next coming months. Uh, you guys are doing a great job, so thank you. Thank you so much for having us. We'll be back soon, I hope. Yes, I hope so too. All right, and we'll be right back after this.